Hey, once again, revolutionaries. Hang on, I'm just gonna adjust something real fast here because, you know, that's what we do here. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Happy Friday morning. Great to have you. I uh, was at a business expo last night. If you need to jumpstart your business or you wanna take a closer peek at uh, the chance to be able to get to know some new people, go to a business expo. Man, that was lots of fun. I met tons of people. Okay, today on our Q&A session, I I'm Carrie Cox, hi. I co-founded a little thing called Feminine Revolutions and we have been answering questions that have been coming into our website and behind the scenes through Facebook messages and all sorts of different things. In fact, I actually have been just talking to some of my friends and they've been like, hey, here's a question that I would have if you wanted to address this. And I'm like, you betcha, no problem. So that's what we've been doing. And today's question is pretty fun. It's kind of like the deep end of the pool when it comes to what's going on in an office. And so it comes from an anonymous source and when you hear the question, you'll understand why. <laughs> All right, so here's the question. I'm struggling at my office with another woman. How is it that I support other women when I work with ladies who are not pulling their weight? Like I said, ouch, talk about jumping into the deep end in a hurry, right? Like, whoo! How do I support other women that I work with in my office when they are the ones who aren't pulling their weight? Legit question. <sighs> and after several years of working in offices with other women, um, I can say that there are a lot of different ways that I can approach this answer. And as I was thinking through it, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know how this Facebook Live is going to go down because there are a lot of different answers that I can give to this question. So bear with me a little bit here so I organize my thoughts and can get this going. At Feminine Revolutions, just FYI, we're all about bold, beautiful, brilliant women. You can be all those things at the same time and you can revolutionize the world around you. You can go for it. We want it to happen. Um, all right, so I think of this in two different ways. I think of this as a middle manager, and I think of this as somebody who's at the top. I think of this as somebody who is working with people. I guess that's three different ways. I think of this as someone who has, who has, you're working with another woman directly. Like you guys are on the same level, there are things going on, and you just don't get along with her. Okay, let's start there. I had that happen. And um, it was a couple of different situations where it was a lot of a, a just kind of a basic personality conflict, right? I'm, I was a little bit more loud and bombastic even way back then than I am today. And when I come into a place, like, people know it. <laughs> so I'm just somebody who makes a difference wherever I walk into. And that's just my personality type. That's how it goes down. So at, at first, this person and I were just kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, let's get along. And, and, and uh, this other person kind of upped their personality to be able to match mine. And I, I honestly tried to lower mine a little bit to be able to match hers. And, and you know, it worked. I mean, we found a way to get along because there's really no reason for you not to at least be able to get along with some of these people, unless you have someone. And let me just get on a little soapbox right now. Unless you are a woman who has some sort of um, advantage, don't take advantage of your advantage, okay? Especially if you're working in an office with other women. You should be the kind of employee that when somebody hires you, they say, okay, I'll use myself as an example. When somebody hires you, they say, Carrie, good God, she's so freaking strong. I didn't know that we actually, I didn't know it was going to work on the team when I hired her, but thank God I did. Can we please find some more people who are just like fill in the blank? Okay. So if you're somebody who, um, I, I don't like, I don't want to get into these technical things because there are things that happen to every one of us. And they're just, some, some people have a harder time working for physical reasons for longer periods of time. Some people have family issues that are going on. Some people, um, you just, if you end up taking advantage of your advantage, that is not the kind of way to get a whole lot more people like you in the office. And if you want more people like you in the office, as opposed to the personality conflict that you're having, the best way to do that is to be so good at your job that the boss says, man, I know we were taking a chance when we hired so-and-so, but that person has been so phenomenal, I think we need to hire more people just like them. And that's how you would get more people like you in your office. Okay, so there's a semi-soapbox moment there. So when you are then a middle manager and you're having difficulties either with another manager or with an employee or something along those lines and it happens to be this woman thing and you're frustrated, let me tell you how not to do it. I'll tell you how not to do it based on how I did it one time. <laughs> one time. You do not go slamming into your boss's office. You do not whip the door behind you and slam it closed and then vent and vomit it all out on this person. You cannot do that and expect it to have lasting change and here's why. <laughs> 
If you run in and you're just, you've had it, right? You fed up because this is what happened to me. This is exactly why I'm telling you don't do it. I was so fed up. I ran into my boss's office. I slammed the door behind me. Everybody knew that I had something cooking and I just let it all out. And it was probably 15 to 20 minutes of venting every frustration that I had with another woman in the office. And what happens is your boss goes into crisis mode when you do that. Your boss goes into, I got to fix this right now. This is a fire that needs to be immediately taken care of. How can I fix this for you right now? And then when you leave the office having said all that you need to say and having it all vented up, right? Like, okay, you're breathing again. You can take on the rest of the day or the boss says, why don't you just go home early? Whatever it is. When you've got a situation like that, the boss thinks that everything has been solved in that moment and that you just blew your lid once and it's fine. And the boss is not interested in changing anything now. Okay. So don't go doing that. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. The, the way that more effective change takes place is to actually be calm and rational and objective and kind of have a case laid out. Not just having a case laid out, but also to be able to speak your boss's language will make a huge difference. When you come busting into their place and you're just like, I've had it, you're speaking your language, okay? You need to speak your boss's language if you actually want to have real change take place. And here's what I mean. I walked into my boss's office. It was the same conflict. It was months, perhaps even years later, and I was able to sit down and say, all right, we need to talk because you and I have broken trust. And it was true, but trust is not my language. I like trust. Trust is important. I don't like it when people mistrust me or break my trust, but trust is not my highest value. Um, there are lots of different values we can talk all about, like, right, like equality and justice and trust and, I don't know, I'm missing the rest of them. There are lots of different equalities that people have that are like, or, or lots of different qualities that people are like, that's my highest value. For my boss, it was trust. So when I told this boss, hey, you and I have broken trust, I immediately had his attention. He was like, what's wrong? What's going on? And so then I was able to lay out the story. I was able to say every time that I have a conflict or something goes down between this person and myself, you choose her side. And I was able to actually say the four or five different ways in which, in which my boss would side with this other person. And in that moment, because I had a great boss in that moment, my boss looked at me and said, I obviously have a blind spot. I didn't realize it. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I'll work on it. Tell me the other ways in which you have felt like I have, you know, gone against you and gone for this person every time. So, hey, like I said, I had a great boss, but I was able to actually get real change to take place in the office with another woman that I was having frustrations with because I was calm and rational and objective and I spoke my boss's language. Those are the things that you need to do in a very calm and simple way because otherwise your boss goes into crisis mode and they think if they can fix this fire at one moment, everything else is gonna be better. But what you're doing when you come in like this is you're saying, no, 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 this is a, this is a habitual pattern and I really do need it fixed. Okay. The other thing that you can do then if you're the top boss, right? And you've got, you've got ladies in the office who aren't getting along, you got cluckers or the hen house or there's a little, right? There's issues. You can just tell sometimes there's drama. The thing that you can do, and this is the way that I would handle some things like this. There actually there are a lot of different stories that I can tell, but today's story is going to be this one. So when I was uh, the big dog <laughs> in my corporate office, I actually had a regular set up meeting with all of my, my inner circle, if you want to call it that, my manager. So there's a business department, there's a sales department, there's a technical department, there are, you know, there's promotions department, there's all these different areas. And so I would meet with these, pe these people on a pretty regular basis, like once a week. So what I ended up doing at one of these meetings was to say, all right, I need each of you to consider who the weakest link on the team is. And I'm not telling you we're going to fire him tomorrow. And I'm not telling you you're going to get rid of him in, in two weeks or whatever it is. I just need you to start thinking about who is it that's on your team. That's the weakest link. Like, Identify who they are, identify why that person is a weak link and what it is that we can do to either help that weak link get better or to help them move along. Okay. Now, if you only have like one or two people in your department, like one person in your department, this becomes a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying we're going to fire that person immediately. There's nothing like that going on, but you need to see why it is that this person is an ideal or where their shortcomings are, or if they really are fantastic and phenomenal, then yeah, we need to hire people just like that. Okay. So if you think about all of the employees at your office and you think about them like on this big old long chain, right? Like, like the best employees in the world are up here. 
And the weakest links, that's what this is, this is a chain. The weakest links are down here. So the concept is that if you are able to knock off some of these weaker links, and this can happen in a couple ways. This can happen by letting somebody go. This can happen by holding people accountable to a point where they realize they really don't wanna work for you. This can happen by actually improving who these people are. Like they realize, oh yeah, I've actually, I fall short in this category. I actually need to get better, okay? When you have an entire chain of employees here and you realize who the weaker links are and you're able to see those weaker links drop off one way or another, and then if you're able to actually replace them with employees who fit here, wow, suddenly there are good things happen in your office. Because think about it, you know, we got rid of this weak link and we hired somebody who's actually here. Awesome. This is then now the next weakest link at the radio station, or in my case, okay? Like, this is the, and I hired somebody who was here and you're like, hot dang. So then pretty soon, the weak link are these people because your office is so much stronger because you have hired so much better you will not have as many conflicts as you have when you have people who are super wink links and all they do is try to worry about other people around them and they don't actually worry about the work that they're producing okay so when you're able to do that you get managers thinking like owners and again it's objective because it's about the work it's not about the personalities it's not about anything that's personal going on in somebody's life. It's not about the drama. It's just about getting across the finish line together as a team and getting something done. Okay, and when you're able to do that, everybody is gonna succeed. And usually when there's drama, if it's like ladies who don't get along in the office or something like that, it's either somebody, something doesn't rub each other the right way or whatever, but you, somebody needs to take that initiative. Okay, so if you're the one who's having a conflict directly with somebody else in your office, somebody needs to take the initiative to be like, all right, let me get to know this person a little bit better. Let me see if I can discover what's really going on. Maybe they were wounded in the past. Maybe they're just you know, tragically still trying to heal from something. Maybe they have a lot of complications in their life. They're taking care of parents and kids. I don't, whatever it is, find out what, get to know this person so that you can then be a positive instrument for encouragement to them, okay? When things are rough, if you step in and be like, hey, yeah, I'll be happy to pick your kids up from school today. Or yeah, let, let me see if I can give you some assistance here, okay? When you're able to give a little bit to that one that you have a personality conflict with, you will be shocked at how easily that person will start to melt and just be like, oh man, okay, now, yeah, now I wanna help you back. If you can do it with sincerity and a genuine and authentic heart, it will be amazing the difference that it makes. And if it doesn't, there are the ways that I told you don't go into your boss's office and there are ways I've told you do go into your boss's office. And I hope that you have a strong boss like I had who could look back at you and say, okay, yeah, I got a blind spot. But the moral of the story here is to remember, if you want more people like you at your office, you have to be so good at what you do that your boss says, I took a chance on hiring Carrie, but man, I need to hire five, six, seven more Carries because she is so good at what she does that I, this office would just be rocking like crazy if we could find more people like her. Okay, when you do that, that is you revolutionizing your world. Okay, I'm Carrie Cox, Feminine Revolutions. If you have questions, please type them in here. You can send them in honestly if you wanna do that too. I'd love to answer them for you. Bold, brilliant, beautiful women, get out there, conquer your Friday, and we'll catch you next time. Take care, everybody.